So today's video is going to be the coolest jobs in marine biology. Before I start, I wanted to mention that the salaries are related to the United States, but I hope this gives you a better grasp on each of these careers moving forward and if you are still interested in them. So my very first job is an underwater filmmaker. An underwater filmmaker is someone that travels the world to interesting locations to film interesting things underwater to tell some kind of story about it. I would say this job is definitely for someone that is adventurous and very willing to put in the work. As an underwater filmmaker, it's going to be very important for you to majorly be your own boss and make sure that you're always having clients and that you're always having some some source of funding supporting you and all of your filming endeavors. If you're interested in becoming an underwater filmmaker, you really want to be taking as many courses and classes for filming as you can to really make sure that you're always improving your skills to be on top of the industry. It's also going to be really important to make sure that you have a lot of experience diving and have as many certifications as you can to be sure that you're able to dive in very diverse conditions. As an underwater filmmaker, Maker, you really don't want to be restricted in what you're able to film. You want to be able to go to as many places as you can because you might lose a job to someone else that can go to those places and it's going to make you more successful and more well-rounded if you're able to dive in all these places. So next up on the list is a boat captain. So there's a huge variety in the types of experiences that you could be involved in, and there's also a lot of jobs in this field. Some types of experiences that you could have as a boat captain is you could be in charge of a fishing boat or a scuba diving boat, or you could be in charge of a kind of leisure recreation kind of boat service. Another really great benefit about being a boat captain is that you can literally have a job anywhere in the world and it's always going to be in demand because there's always going to be people wanting to be on boats. If you're interested in becoming a boat captain, you do not need a degree, but you do need a lot of experience before managing larger boats. So many boat captains actually end up starting their own business. So this business could be a fishing charter, it could be some sort of fun like sunset service or something like that, but there's always going to be people that want to get out on the water and they need a captain to do so. So it's really convenient once a captain has their own boat to kind of just turn that boat into an entire business. Salaries for a boat captain were surprisingly high and the median average for a boat captain according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics for the United States was $82,000. So next job on this list is one that I actually have some personal experience with and that is a deep sea biologist. So my professor that I worked with at my university was actually a deep sea biologist and she had some of the coolest stories to tell. So working as a deep sea biologist, you're very often going to be working either with a university or a research institution, but you could also be working with the government or a nonprofit or a private institution or a combination of all of these things. Deep sea biologists use ROVs or remotely operated vehicles or submarines to explore deep parts of the ocean. My professor was actually featured in the submarine that went down in the Our Planet BBC series, which it still just blows my mind that she didn't even she didn't even mention this to me, but she was the scientist along with another scientist that got to go to the bottom of the ocean floor and explore what was down there in the complete darkness. And that is just crazy. No one else in the whole world has seen that before. And she gets to be some of the first people to ever experience some of those species down there, some of which didn't even have names yet. Another aspect of being a deep sea biologist is that you are often going to be going out on cruises. This could be one to two times a year. And these cruises, they sound much uh, more glamorous than they actually are. They're research cruises. So you're out with a bunch of scientists, usually on a smaller boat, you're sleeping on the boat and you're taking research samples and doing research that entire time. It's usually very long days, but it can be a really cool experience to 
collaborate with all kinds of different scientists and also see some of these species that have never been seen by anyone in the world before. A salary for this kind of position, according to my professor that I worked with, is about sixty to eighty-five thousand dollars. But you can achieve some higher positions, but those are senior positions in academia. So my fourth job on this list is a dive master or a dive instructor. These are probably some of the most common backpacker jobs in the world, and this is for good reason. A dive master is basically a guide for a group of divers to make sure that they're following a safe diving plan and that they make sure that they know where they're going and they know what they're doing underwater. A dive instructor is someone that's going to be teaching new and experienced divers how to become an open water diver, an advanced diver, or any other specialty. These jobs are really similar and that's why I included them together, but both of them are going to involve basically every day on the water or in the water and experiencing very cool ecosystems. There's often very long hours that are associated with this kind of job to where you're usually out on the water first thing in the morning, you get a little lunch break and then you're out in the water in the afternoon and then you're putting tanks away and making sure the debrief happens for your students and everything's okay in the dive shop at the end of the day. So another reason why this is really popular for a lot of backpackers around the world is because it's a very um, short-term kind of position to where usually contracts are going to be about six months to maybe a year. So a lot of people take these contracts in some country and then they go to another country and then they do another contract there. So it's pretty easy to um, kind of have this job anywhere around the world because there's scuba divers all over the world. If you're interested in either of these careers, studying marine biology definitely isn't essential and having a degree definitely isn't, isn't an essential, but studying marine biology could give you an edge and it could really benefit you and the people that you work with in being a more responsible diver and being a more educated diver about the ecosystem that you're interacting with. If you're interested in becoming a dive master, you need at least 40 dives before you start a dive master course. And if you're interested in becoming an instructor, you need at least 60 dives before you start a instructor course. The salary for these kinds of positions is truly something that you shouldn't think too much about. If you really want to become a dive master or dive instructor, then just do it. But that being said, the salary for this kind of position is between 18 and $36,000. 36 on the higher end. Next up on the list is a marine archaeologist, and this is also another position that I have a little bit of experience with. So this job is basically exactly the same as a land archaeologist, you're just working in a different ecosystem. So as a marine archaeologist, it's going to be very common for you to be working with an academic institution or a research institution and also be a researcher or a professor. But it is also really important to note that many of the uh, sites that artifacts are found at are not exactly glamorous, beautiful coral reef sites or anything like that. A lot of times they are in the worst conditions imaginable. At my university, we had a team of aquatic archeologists and they were excavating mammoth bones at a nearby river. And the river that they were excavating was near zero visibility. It was complete darkness. They needed lights to make sure that they could see what they were actually digging. It was a very stressful and kind of crazy position to be in, but that is in reality going to be a lot of what happens as a marine archeologist. You have to be willing to go to these places that no one else is willing to go to and you have to be willing to be an explorer of them. That's not to say that you're not gonna have the opportunity to go to some beautiful places as well, 
but it just depends on what you're actually studying. If you're interested in becoming a marine archaeologist, it's going to be very important to make sure that you're really focusing on your history classes and making sure that you take as many as you can. It's also going to be important to eventually attain a master's or a PhD because this is such an intensive education and history based field. It's going to be very important to be very knowledgeable about the topics that you're uncovering and the stories that you're finding out. It's also going to be very useful to have some extensive diving experience if you're interested in becoming a marine archaeologist because obviously you're going to be doing a lot of diving. If you're working in deeper locations, then you're probably going to be using some sort of other technology to explore, and you might not even be diving, but it's obviously going to give you a lot more opportunity if you're able to explore them yourself and you don't need the technology. The average median salary for this type of position, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, is $66,800. on the list is an aquatic veterinarian and I got a lot of interest in this type of job on the last video so I thought I would expand a little bit more on it here. An aquatic veterinarian is basically just like a normal veterinarian to where you are taking animals as your patients and you are assessing them for different injuries and their general state of well-being. You're just doing this for fish and aquatic animals. So one of the most common places that an aquatic veterinarian is going to be working is is going to be an aquarium, but they could also be working at an amusement park or they could be working at a university doing research. There's also some instances of aquatic veterinarians that do some private work to where they're taking clients that have large koi fish or some type of fish that they really want to have cared for. So if you're interested in becoming an aquatic veterinarian, it's going to be so important for you to master the sciences. Sciences are so important in this field and if you hate science, then this probably isn't the job for you. And if you're trying to become an aquatic veterinarian, it's definitely going to be very important for you to get as many animal-related experiences with aquatic ecosystems as you can. So volunteering with an aquarium, volunteering with different nonprofits that do any sort of outreach with aquatic ecosystems is really going to benefit you to show that you have some sort of experience with aquatic animals in a health related aspect. So I couldn't find a salary specifically for aquatic veterinarians, but veterinarians in general are going to be making about $95,460 according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So next up on this list is an ocean engineer. So an ocean engineer is going to be designing and building structures in the ocean. So this could be piers, it could be buildings, or windmills, bridges, anything you can imagine. Ocean engineers have a major impact on coastal ecosystems. As an engineer, you're sort of an inventor to where you have a lot of freedom to create something incredible. And if you have a lot of experience in understanding what is going to be sustainable and what's going to really help the environment, then you can create something that's going to change a community forever. If you're interested in becoming an ocean engineer, it's going to be super important to focus on math. This is a very math intensive career. It's also going to be really important to understand physics. A degree in any type of engineering can be relevant, although I would probably recommend environmental engineering because it's going to give you a little bit more of a grasp on the environmental aspects of creating structures for an ecosystem. And I think that if you're placing anything along coastlines or anything in the water, it's going to be so important to understand the environmental costs of developing those structures. So the salary for this type of position, it definitely depends on the type of engineering that you're doing, but an environmental engineer makes an average of $80,000 a year, and that's according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics.
Next up is a commercial diver. And this is probably one of the craziest jobs that I have on this list. A commercial diver is in charge of inspecting, repairing, and constructing basically anything underwater. So the engineer designs the structure. A commercial diver is going to be welding it and putting it together and making sure that it's repaired and inspected all of that after the actual structure has been established. This work can range from sewage line installation to rock drilling and blasting to underwater photography. And you're going to be diving in some really crazy intense situations. Very often you're going to be diving in cold conditions or you're going to be diving in very low visibility, but you'll always be in the water and you'll always be on the water. If you're interested in becoming a commercial diver, you need to be 18 years old and you need at least a high school diploma and you're going to need so much much technical diving experience. Technical diving is crucial to this type of position because you're going to be handling all sorts of equipment and you're going to be diving in some dangerous conditions to where it could be very cold, there could be high currents, and you're going to have lots of gear on you. So it's going to be super important to make sure that you are a very confident and very capable diver to handle anything that comes your way underwater. Another interesting aspect of this career, if you're interested in becoming one, is that you work long days but you only work for a portion of the year. So there's also a lot of traveling with this type of position because you're going to be needing to travel to different contracted sites, different structures, along coastlines. So the salary for this type of position is actually pretty substantial at $67,100 according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. <laughs> So my next job on this list is an aquarist. An aquarist is basically just like an aquatic zookeeper to where you're going to be cleaning and feeding and training all kinds of different animals to make sure that they are having a great state of well-being and that they are healthy. You're also likely going to be involved in a few different things at an aquarium, like educating the public about different environments, or different species. So if you're interested in becoming an aquarist, it's definitely going to be very important for you to study things like biology, like marine biology or environmental science, because as an aquarist, you are going to need to understand these animals on a very uh, personal basis, but you're also gonna to need to understand a lot of the kind of larger view perspectives of where these species fit into the bigger picture. And it's also going to be really important for you to communicate those things to other people when you're educating them about those species. Another important thing to think about with this kind of position is that it often takes a lot of volunteering and unpaid experience to kind of get your foot in the door with this kind of industry. So you're often going to need to apply to some competitive unpaid internships to start working towards actually making a career out of it. So the average median salary I couldn't find exactly for aquarists, but for animal caretakers in general, like zookeepers and aquarists included, the average median salary is $27,990 according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And supervisory positions moving up in an aquarium can move up to $50,000. So those are my top coolest careers for marine biology. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a little bit more direction in choosing a career later in your life. And I hope you found it interesting. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. And if you find this content interesting, then please subscribe to this channel. But otherwise, have a great rest of your day and thank you for watching.